in this segment. I want to see who you in- introduce first. I was going to say, <laughs> the show's going to be hijacked in just a second. You'll not see John and myself again. Normally, when somebody brings in donuts, that's the thing I lead with. But the treats today are not necessarily the donuts, although they are appreciated. Judge Stephen Redding has brought those in. Uh, he's also brought in uh, a special guest. Judge, good morning to you. Good morning. Nice to see everybody. Great to have you here. Uh, this uh, Dylan, uh, can you remove the title slug there underneath the judge for a second? There you go. Perfect. And then we can see our special guest, which is not Steve Redding, the judge. It is Raya Sunshine. Judge, tell us about this uh, cute little, fe- uh, I guess it's a lady, huh? It is a lady. She's uh, Raya Sunshine is five and, a, five and a half months old now. And uh, we started a project about a year ago uh, researching whether or not it would be feasible to bring in a comfort dog to work with children in the abuse and neglect cases as well as the juvenile delinquency and juvenile services cases and she is the end the end product of uh of all of that research that was done Uh, we chose her from fox creek farms breeders in berkeley springs and uh, sent her off for 10 weeks of initial training with prep your pup uh, training academy Uh, she went to pennsylvania and uh, brought her home. She's been receiving wonderful care from Shenandoah Veterinarian Hospital. Uh-huh. Uh, taking really good care of her, and she's been working in the courthouse now for about a month and has already made a huge difference uh, both with the children and the employees and, and staff at the courthouse and has been a wonderful addition to our family. And she is how old? Five and a half months. And she's a golden doodle? Golden doodle, yes, sir. All right. Was that breed chosen specifically for any particular reason? It was. Uh, we recognize that there were issues uh, with courthouse comfort dogs, with folks that have allergies, so we uh, went with an, a we hypoallergenic dog. That's awesome. And, uh, she, non, wants, non she wants those dog. snacks. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. Don't let her see the donuts. Puppy, puppy child training treats, by the way. You can hear her having a little snack there. And Ray is very affectionate. Yes, she is. Yes, yeah, she and, is. and uh, tell us what her courthouse duties will be. Well, we have... Uh, juvenile delinquency and juvenile services cases uh, on Monday so she'll be in the courtroom today and she uh, actually sits behind the bench with me and then as each case is called she's introduced to the uh, juvenile and they have an opportunity to pet her and and, uh, talk to her and have her sit with them uh, throughout the case if they're interested in that most of them are and uh, she sits in the in my chambers for in-camera interviews when we have Mm -hmm. uh, children in abuse and neglect cases who come in to have private discussions with me with just the guardian ad litem present Uh, and and she's really remarkable it's uh, it's been interesting for me because I didn't recognize uh, the extent to which dogs can absorb people's emotions Uh, we had a a uh, young uh, girl not, not a let me say this correctly, we had a, uh, a young teenager in court that had to give a victim impact statement in a difficult case not too long ago, and uh, she was really struggling with her emotions, and, uh, you know, just for a few minutes, that uh, girl forgot about everything and, and why she was there and was just giggling and, and uh, kind of dried her tears up and was interacting with Raya, and, you know, it was at that point that it really solidified with me that this was a really worthwhile project to get involved with and that she's really going to be very much uh, an asset for us in, in helping the kids get through some traumatic experiences. That's great. Bill, the last time when, when Raya stood up like that, I thought she was going all cheated John Rosenweber across the table <laughs> at Larry Schultz for a second. Except she had a smile. Raya had, had a smile. Raya had a smile. <laughs> Ray is kind of an unusual name, Ray of Sunshine. How did you come? How did you get the name, Judge? Uh, tough story. Uh, January thirtieth of this year, uh, we were still in the process. Uh, she had not even been born yet. She was born in February, but we had already taken steps to uh, secure a, a puppy in her litter, or in the litter that she was born from. And uh, on that Tuesday. We had a training for CPS workers. We had about 40 workers there, and we were in Judge Cohey's courtroom. Judge Cohey McLaughlin and I uh, did a training, and uh, one of the bailiffs, Ernie Reed, who's um, 
mid fifties. A wonderful man, a uh, Air Force vet. Um, one of the beloved people at the courthouse was was struggling a little bit, and he and I rode up the elevator together to the fourth floor in the courthouse. Uh, and he mentioned he was uh, not feeling well and, and having chest pains. And uh, Cindy Largent Hill, who's with the uh, Court Improvement Program with the Supreme Court, was uh, with us throughout the training and uh, really got on him. And he uh, he promised he had a doctor's appointment. That was a Tuesday for that Thursday. And driving into the courthouse at 7 o'clock on uh the following day, the 31st of January, we learned they had, a, uh, I believe, a massive heart attack in the shower at home, uh, and we lost him, which was devastating to the uh, folks in the courthouse. Uh, but very quickly, uh, the chief uh, bailiff, Mike Lang, who I know all of you are uh, familiar with, Mike mm -hmm. came to me and said, would uh, you be interested in thinking about naming Rhea uh, in honor of Ernie? And I thought, well, it, getting a female puppy how are we going to do this and uh, we ultimately decided Ray of Sunshine because Ernie's uh, catchphrase when anybody walked into the courtroom was hello sunshine mm -hmm. um, and he was incredible with the kids uh, with uh, any trial that Judge Cohey had that involved children he was kind of the comforter in chief and uh, would always bring them stuffed animals and settle them down and uh it just was was wonderful so we threw some names around and finally we selected Raya Sunshine uh, and we recently had a uh, ceremony for Ernie at the Berkeley County Commission and we're able to have uh, Ernie's wife Terry and his two daughters one by uh, FaceTime and the other in present uh, present in person come in and and we dedicated her in Ernie's memory and recognized the family and uh, and so that's uh, that's the story behind the name. And uh, she's a very special girl, and Ernie was a very special guy. John? So by the time the – dealing with these cases has to just be soul-stealing at, at one level. But by the time they get to the courtroom, these kids have already been through a lot in the investigatory phase. So is there thought of expanding this kind of interaction with cuddly animals during the investigatory portion as well? I don't know about the investigatory portion portion uh, that would be more of an issue for the uh, prosecutors and law enforcement to look into because they're involved in that part of the process we are not uh, but in terms of uh, a broader effort for having comfort animals in the courthouse the court improvement program which is a, a division of the West Virginia Supreme Court of Appeals is uh, looking at this as a pilot program uh, so we have set up with Fox Creek Farm and the uh, trainer, uh, Prep Your Pup Academy, uh, their willingness to participate and provide dogs to anyone else in the state who, who desires to do this. So we have a judicial conference coming up in October. Rhea will be there. Uh, the Court Improvement Program is meeting this fall. She'll be there for that. And we've got a package of, of research that we've done uh, both about the benefits uh, emotionally for children and then also about some of the legal issues that are kind of uh, difficult and need to be worked through. And a good example is if you have a uh, comfort dog available for a child in a criminal case, uh, maybe a, a sexual child abuse case, the defense is potentially going to raise objections. If the jury sees the puppy, the jury is going to automatically have some uh, bias in favor of the child and that somehow the dog will bolster their credibility and, and some prejudice against the defendant. So you have to have steps in place to uh, set it up so that defense counsel can object. Uh, the state would have to show a need that the child has to have the dog present. You would have to have steps put in place so that the dog is not visible to the jury, uh, dogs underneath the witness stand, and uh, when the jury comes in, uh, it has to be almost unnoticeable, and then uh, the jury will leave before the, the child comes off the stand. So I'm working on an administrative order to make sure that we're uh, ready for that when the time comes. She's still too young in five and a half months to be in the courtroom during 
during the jury trial because, as you can see, she wants to be the life of the show and she has <laughs> no desire to be invisible. Uh, so we're continuing her training and, and uh, hope she'll be able to be in that position probably in about a year. But for now, she's at hearings uh, where there's no prejudice, no jury, and in, the, uh, in chambers for meetings with kids in chambers. So it's a process. Now, the comfort animals are not new. They the, th throughout the country have been some. Do you have any idea how many courts throughout the country utilize a comfort animal? I don't. Um, I know that it's growing. Uh, it, it's. Uh, I haven't heard anybody mm -hmm. say that they had a bad experience mm -hmm. with creating a project like this. I do know that some of the states, uh, like Pennsylvania, have have been leaders in the effort. In fact, the legal issues that I was talking about a moment ago came up in, in uh, Pennsylvania and went up to their high court, and the high court set out the process that you need to have in order to do this effectively so that a uh, defendant is not prejudiced by, by having an animal in the courtroom. Uh, but there are a number of states, and, and I want to say it's in the 20s right now okay. that, yeah. that utilize them. You see them more frequently in schools, uh, daycare centers, uh, hospitals, nursing homes. That's kind of where the the, uh, the projects started and where they're utilized the most right now. Yeah, I've been fortunate over the years to work with a group called K-9 to Independent Living, CCI, and they've been instrumental in the mobility in Paired or mobility restricted individuals, but they've also started moving out to nursing home. And I don't. And I was talking to the lady the other day about the courts. She said they have not started doing that, but they're thinking about it. Mm -hmm. So it is a move that's getting some some speed. Some yeah, that's nice to hear. Yeah. That's nice to hear, particularly if you can have uh, yeah. independent organizations yeah. involved, because mm -hmm. it's it is uh, not an inexpensive inexpensive yeah. project for sure. Where does Rhea stay uh, and live, uh, for that matter, Judge? Uh, she, she lives in my home and and sleeps in my king size bed between my <laughs> wife and I. Uh, How not, long did that take to happen? Where she belongs, right? Not, not my choice. Uh, her crate is next to the bed. She goes there when she knows I'm upset with her. Uh -huh. that's, that's about it. So I thought you were going to say you go and lay in the crate for peace at night to try to sleep. No, that's what the couch is for. She she yeah. takes like four times her body area when she spreads out. I'm guessing it. Oh night, yeah, right? yeah. Now this is a new new concept, at least in West Virginia. Has the Supreme Court uh, been very receptive in what you're doing? Well, through the court improvement program, yes. Mm -hmm. um, the Supreme Court itself, I think, has not been deeply involved in the process, and we're going to be briefing them mm -hmm. kind of on what we're sure. doing. Uh, but the court improvement program is the uh, committee, if, for lack of a better mm -hmm. word, that deals with the abuse and neglect cases in particular. Mm -hmm. And uh, they've been in from the very beginning and, and have been excited about it. So, And Cindy Largent Hill, who's the go-to person for any issue related to uh, children mm -hmm. uh, in trouble in West Virginia uh, through abuse and neglect or if they're having difficulties with the criminal justice system, she's the person you call for the really hard cases. And she's the director of the Court Improvement Program. Uh, she, she's, she lives in Berkeley Springs, which is wonderful. Uh, so we've had her deeply involved and uh, look forward to the Supreme Court getting to meet her in October. I've never seen Rob take a picture of a guest before. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and he just did that. And Bill, too. It was about 10 years ago, I was watching um, a, a CBS Sunday Morning, and they, and they did an, uh, a piece on Juvenile Detention Center where the kids would train dogs to become service dogs as a way of, of – you know, give them something to do that, that is meaningful. And then, of course, at the end, you know, they're not their dogs. They have to let the, the dogs go. And so there's this, this whole arc of service and love and then, you know, ultimately giving of, you know, to somebody else. I, and I, at the time, I thought it was a very touching um, uh, piece that they did. And I, I see this. And, of course, I'm a huge dog person anyway. But, uh, yeah, there's there's so much that these creatures have to give to people, is there an avenue for for citizens to to enter a program where their their dogs can become part of a service animal yeah. program? Do you know? Yeah, there are a number of organizations that uh, permit that, and 
uh, I just think it's uh, Therapy Alliance uh, of Dogs is one of the organizations. Um, that concept, I haven't seen it with the juvenile facility, but I have seen stories on the internet when we were doing the research at uh, adult correctional facilities with folks that are, are serving life sentences and it gives them a purpose mm -hmm. and uh, th it's remarkable to see what you would ordinarily perceive as a hardened criminal uh, become a kid again kind of dealing with these kids and there's a, a level of innocence underneath that out outward exterior and, and uh, those are incredible dogs are produced through that those programs uh, and I think it's life-changing for the inmates. So uh, I, I am aware of those programs, and I, I find them to be incredibly worthwhile. Yeah, I think you've answered my question. My question was uh, going to be that right, uh, Rayla is looking to be for children in the courts, but would would she have an application for adults in the court system as well? Absolutely. Uh, she's yeah. She will be made available to anyone mm -hmm. who is struggling uh, emotionally, going through a court experience. In fact, in fairness to a criminal defendant, uh, if they decide to testify, which uh, occurs from time to time, she would be available to them and, mm -hmm. and uh, be able to sit with them and, and uh, comfort them through what's a very difficult process. Judge Steve Redding, our guest here on the program, along with the newest Berkeley County Court comfort dog, Rhea Sunshine. And Steve, when you're working being a judge, who's making sure that Rhea is not running around the room begging for treats? This leash that's on her stays on her most of the day, and mm -hmm. she sits with me. She's underneath the bench. She has a little uh, pillow bed down there, and usually, as you saw when we first came in, she's very excited initially meeting people, uh, but calms down fairly quickly. So we go in about a half hour before anyone comes in the courtroom, and I let her say hi to all the bailiffs and court staff, and then she settles down. When I'm in chambers, she's in chambers with me. So we're literally together 24-7 uh, right now. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I, we keep a close eye on her. She's had some accidents in the house, but uh, at the courthouse, because she's so closely tethered to me, uh, she's done really well. She's not had any accidents, which has been nice. I'm sure that uh, Jackie Lang and the maintenance staff are pleased with that. <laughs> Jackie what, is, yeah. what is the typical length uh, or career for a dog in this role? Usually uh, they're fully trained and fully acclimated and, in, and working full time at two years, and they usually go to about eight or nine years. Uh, and every dog is different, obviously. It depends on their health and their temperament. Uh, but my anticipation is that uh, her career will probably span my career. Uh, I'll be on the bench probably another eight or nine years, and, and I think that's about when she'll retire as well. Is there any data, this is a real woo-woo question, so I apologize, but is there any data that, because dogs are, I think, pretty empathetic, that, that there's an emotional toll on the dog in interacting with the emotions of, of the people they're, they're comforting? I haven't, <clears throat> excuse me, I haven't heard that. That's a fascinating question. Uh, it might be a question for uh, Tori Shamlin is the veterinarian that takes care of her at Shenandoah. I, I, I text her frequently. You know, she, she whimpered in her sleep. Is she having a nightmare <laughs> or something? Right? So, literally, it's like when I brought my first child home 40 years ago. I'm like, well, how did they trust me with this <laughs> this child? And you call the pediatrician and driving. Them, and I'm doing that to Tori. I'm calling her constantly with all those questions. That's that's a great question. I'll text her as soon as I get out of here and. and, and email you the answer or text you the answer. So Rhea looks like she loves everybody, uh, but dogs are very perceptive. Uh, have you seen any instances where she is turned off against a, a particular individual? Other than her reaction to you, Bill, yes, no, I've not seen that at all. <laughs> yeah, she came out with bird teeth ready to go <laughs> after me. <laughs> I really have not. Yeah. Yeah, so far. Yeah. She's not met a stranger or not met someone she's not willing to be yeah. friends with mm -hmm. she has had two fights in the neighborhood <laughs> with dogs bigger than her um titan and cashmere are the yeah. two dogs <laughs> and uh she's really not a fighter yeah. i'll just yeah. leave it at that but she she likes to play with dogs and she doesn't understand that she's being a little too aggressive yeah. right now because yeah. of being a puppy but yep puppies ha puppies do that i guess right so uh steve what are the majority of cases you're seeing in your courtroom right now I have uh, two abuse and neglect days uh, every other week 
I have one uh, juvenile day every week. So my Mondays are always juvenile uh, morning to, to the end of the day. Juvenile offender or juvenile victim? Juvenile offender, uh, either juvenile delinquency, which is a, had it been committed by an adult, would be a crime. And, uh, and then status offenses, uh, truancy, or doing something that's only wrong because you're under the age of 18, uh, such as smoking, under the age of 21, drinking, uh, things like that. And then every other week I have, well, sometimes I have three days. Uh, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday are open for abuse and neglect cases. Tuesday and Wednesday are, are jam-packed from 9 in the morning till 5, sometimes later, and we usually get about a half hour for lunch. So those are her really busy days. I would think that uh, uh, the juvenile abuse cases would be particularly hard to adjudicate. They are. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, anybody that cares about children and uh, and has a heart would be devastated to sit yeah. and listen to the things that happen to these children. And, you know, the only uh, – positive you can take out of how hard it is to sit over the cases to realize that it's so much harder for the child who's had to go through uh, the things that the children go through and just recognize that you're there trying to help them and, mm -hmm. and make their lives better and hence uh, trying to have Raya in the courtroom. About a minute left uh, with Judge Steve Redding and Raya Sunshine and, and what do you two do from here Steve? We're heading back over to the courthouse to start our juvenile hearings at nine o'clock and uh, have a, a busy day ahead of us so she's been in the courtroom probably about six weeks now and she gets her first vacation at the beach next week so Very we'll nice. see how that goes <laughs> well thanks so much for bringing ray yeah. in with you this morning wonderful thank Just you for having us i really appreciate it i'm uh, pleased for the community to know that this project is there for the kids and uh, hope everybody finds it worthwhile <laughs> she's ready to go i think that's pretty good for a puppy to sit there for us she wants those snacks though i can tell you